you've been seeing some people on Zoom or Teams doing some magic with their remote presentations, and you've been wondering how they were doing it. Then you found out that they were using uh, some sort of broadcasting software. For example, OBS Studio or Vimix or Ecamm. And then you started digging into it, and maybe now you want to know more because you also want to level up your professional remote presentations. Two of the things that uh, I uh, was wondering when I started my journey was, you know, what are virtual camera and what is a virtual audio cable? And this is what we're going to find out today. And I promise you, I'll give you the easiest explanation ever you'll hear on, or you'll find on YouTube <clears throat> on virtual camera and virtual audio cable. If we haven't met before, my name is Enrico Zamparo. I'm a trainer, a facilitator, and a content creator. And my mission is to help you become a remote working hero by adopting the technology that works best for you. So one step after the other. Let's see at the agenda. So virtual camera and virtual audio cable. First of all, what are they for? Why do we need them? Second thing, well, actually, what are they? Why are they different? Why don't we just use the physical cables and the physical camera? How do we install them? And finally, how do we use them? How do we set them up to actually send content to our video conferencing platform? Okay, so first thing, let's start from the basics. And let's start from what is a physical camera and a physical audio cable. Well, I've just taken my normal um, USB, very cheap and low quality webcam. I'm now streaming with my mirrorless uh, Sony. And well, you're, you know it, right? It's a camera, it has a cable, and it's connected to the computer. So this cable and this camera is a device which is connected to the PC or to your Mac which is another device. In a similar way, we have audio cables. This is an audio cable that I use for my guitar. Uh, so it, it has an in and it has an out. So one goes into the guitar and the other one goes into the amplifier. So the physical cable takes the sound, the audio, from the guitar and brings it to the amplifier. It's the same if we're using our headset, right? So headset and microphone, we have uh, the, the voice that is going into the microphone and that the cable connects one device, the microphone, with another device, the computer. So a cable, a, a physical cable, connects, in this case, a device, the camera, to the computer, another device. Now, then the computer has software that is able to send the audio and the video directly from the camera into your video conferencing platform. For example, Zoom or Teams or Google Meet or whatever you're using. And the same happens for the audio input. So the headphones, the headset with the microphone. You have a cable that goes into the, your computer and that then converts the sound and sends it to your video conferencing platform. Now, why do we need, why don't we just use uh, a physical cable as we, you're maybe doing uh, till now? You're just connecting your camera and your microphone and you're going, uh, you're, you're joining your colleagues on your Zoom meeting. Well, that's because we have one thing in the middle. So the thing in the middle, the one that I use is called OBS Studio, but it can be Vimix, it can be Ecamm Live, it can be whatever other broadcasting software you like. I like OBS Studio because it's free, it's open source, it has full flexibility, but um, I'm not here to convince you about OBS. Um, whatever you like, I think it's going to be good. The concept that I want to explain here is that we need something in the middle, or not we need, in order to spice up our presentations, remote presentations, we need something in the middle, and that something is OBS, for example. So now, 
the camera and the microphone send the signal video and audio signal to the computer that sends it to OBS. And then we have to take it from OBS and send it to Zoom. So why do we need this middleman? Well, we don't want to overcomplicate things just for the sake of it, right? Um, so there are obviously some advantages. And the advantage is that OBS or any other broadcasting software can take the input from many sources into it and then send them all combined to your video conferencing platform. So if when you're on Zoom, you have only one camera and you have uh, one audio, well, yes, you can share your screen, you can share your desktop audio, but you know there are a couple of steps uh, to get there. With OBS, you can actually combine multiple cameras, multiple media. You can add lower thirds graphics, uh, overlays, transitions. You can have multiple scenes. In other words, a broadcasting software allows you to have a homemade um, TV studio where you create different scenes. Um, scenes can be seen a little bit like a sli different slides in a PowerPoint presentation, but Scenes are much more dynamic. You can add motion. You can uh, add your camera. Uh, basically, you can have you can add everything that you see on TV. So video, audio, music, and uh, graphics. So as you see here, you can have camera one, but then also camera two. You can build a scene with your uh, screen share. Uh, you can have a video. Then you can have your microphone, music. So everything goes into OBS. And if you've seen one of my previous videos, I um, make the comparison of OBS, uh, the analogy of OBS as uh, to the kitchen in a restaurant. That's where you cook all your ingredients, uh, you spice up your presentation, and then you serve it to your clients uh, at the table who are eating, or in other words, to your audience on Zoom or Teams. Now, if we send multiple inputs into OBS, then OBS needs to be able to send the audio and video signal to the video conferencing platform. And this is where the virtual camera and virtual audio cable come into the game. So we still need the physical cables to connect the computer uh, to connect the microphone or the camera to the computer, but they are going into OBS. Then we need something that looks like a camera and something that looks like an audio cable that is able to take the video and the sound out from OBS and send it to Zoom. So if a physical cable is real, is tangible, is a piece of hardware and connects a device to another device, a virtual camera and a virtual audio cable is a software that connects an application, OBS, to another application, Zoom. So why are they called virtual camera and virtual audio cable? Well, they're called so because um, they, they are a little bit like imposter. They, they, they are cheating, right? This software takes audio and video from your broadcasting software, wears a mask and goes to Zoom or Teams and says, hey, I'm a, I, I look like a real cable, like a physical cable that is connecting an, an external device. So please let me in. It knocks at the door and Zoom that in some way, you know, is a little bit maybe can't see very well, said, oh, okay, you're a cable, fine, you're a microphone, fine, please come in. But instead of having the microphone, you have all the audio coming from OBS. And instead of using a, a physical camera that you see in your Zoom list, then you see the output from OBS that includes your camera, but includes lots of other stuff, media and graphics. So, I hope that this, uh, this explanation makes sense to you. And if not, please let me know in the, in the chat. So uh, I'd like to 
to move forward then to, to the next step. Um, we've seen that, you know, what they are for, the need to connect an application broadcasting software to another application, a video conferencing platform. We've seen what they are, and these are software. These are an application. There is nothing physical with it. Um, and we've seen also how they work. We've seen that they take information from the broadcasting software and send it, put on a mask, make Zoom believe that they are a real camera or a real audio cable, and then um, get the door opened from Zoom so that actually you can use into Zoom uh, your audio coming from OBS and your video as a camera also coming from OBS. Now, how do we install them? How do we make this thing work on the computer? Um, well, let me, I will uh, share my screen and I will share my OBS. Now, I, you will see myself and you will see what I see on my OBS, including my camera, and you will have this infinite mirroring effect. Apologies for that. There is a way to avoid that, which is opening another OBS instance, a clean one. However, uh, this requires some computer resources. And since I'm doing this live, I don't want my computer to crash. So please bear with me. And uh, yeah, apologies if this the effect is going to annoy you. Okay, now you see my OBS. This is the output window, and that's the one that I've just minimized, so you don't uh, it doesn't bother you too much. So, do we need to do something for the virtual camera? Well, actually, we don't need any installation because OBS Studio already comes with an integrated virtual camera. So whatever you have in your output window here, which could be um, the video, the graphics, and so on, you see I have lots of scenes in here for my, for my um, stream. Then if you start, if you click on Start Virtual Camera, that's the only thing that you need to do. So you're telling the software, take the signal from OBS and send it to Zoom. Now, how does it work with Zoom? I haven't opened a, a Zoom meeting, uh, but basically what you have to do is to go to your Zoom or Teams, and now in the list of cameras, you will see the OBS virtual camera. It's not a real camera, but Zoom believes it is. So you just select that camera instead of your normal, usual camera, and now everything that will appear here on the output window will be broadcasted to Zoom. What about the audio? And let me go back to the main camera. The audio is slightly um, more complicated, meaning that there is not a built-in thing into OBS that allows you to uh, immediately click a button and send the audio to, to Zoom. Uh, Virtual audio cables, or one virtual audio cable, needs to be installed. But don't worry, that's also free, and it doesn't just work with OBS, it works with anything on your computer. So to download it, you have, uh, well, you have multiple possibilities, but the most common and reliable one is to go uh, to VB Audio, and I have, I can show you the site here. So this is VB Audio site. I'll put the link. Actually, you already find the link in the in the description below. Um, and here you see the uh, audio cable, virtual audio cable applications downloaded for Windows or for Mac, depending on the system you're using. And that's it. By doing so, you will have installed your virtual audio cables. Now, is that all? Mm, not really. Now the audio cable is there. And I would like to spend the last couple of minutes on this tutorial just to let you figure out the two, three steps that you need to do to make this work. But don't worry if you're interested uh, in setting it up. I have a full dedicated video on that, and this is extensively 
covered in my um, OBS for Remote Presentations uh, course that you'll find on my website. So now let's go again to my uh, screen share. And here in OBS, you'll find all the audio sources for a specific scene. Now you see the Rodecaster Pro, this is the microphone that I'm using, and in fact you see the meter that is going up and down. If I'm silent for a moment, you've seen it was going down. Now, if I have to send this to Zoom, how can I do it? Well, you have to add a filter. And if you don't know what filters are, no worries, just check my OBS playlist. Then add an audio monitor filter. And the thing that I want to show you now is that you select the device and you just have to select cable imp input. So that's your virtual cable. After you've installed it from... Uh, um, from VB audio cable, it will appear in the list. And now, if we go back to the main view, now you have to think, um, you have to think of your virtual audio cable as a physical audio cable. The physical audio cable as an in that goes into, let's say, the guitar, the instrument that's the source of the audio, and then it has an out that is where the sound needs to go to, the amplifier, for example. So the VB audio cable in will go into OBS, that is the source, whereas the VB audio cable out will go to Zoom. So when you go to Zoom, from the list of your microphones, you won't select your real actual microphone, but you will select your VB cable out. Now, again, why? What is the advantage of doing that? Well, the advantage is that uh, not only you can send your microphone, but you can repeat the process that we've just seen and uh, add an audio monitor filter and share your desktop audio, your media audio, maybe you have sound effects, um, any type of, uh, of audio can be shared through this virtual cable. So what comes into Zoom is all the different imp audio inputs that we have sent from OBS into the in of the audio cable. From the out, all the inputs come out together. So I hope this makes sense to you. That was my quick and hopefully I kept the promise um, that it was the easiest explanation ever on what an audio cable and a virtual audio cable and virtual camera are. Now, if you got curious and if you're starting with OBS, I really suggest you check my OBS playlist here. You'll find lots of beginners as well as advanced videos. But then if you're ready to take the next step and uh, you're ready to become a remote presentation hero, then go watch my uh, OBS course on my website. I'll put the link here or maybe in the description below. Thank you.